Hello, my name is Or Kahlon. I'm from the Department of Neurology at the Adassa Hebrew University Medical Center, and I would like to present to you our work entitled Quicol as a drug candidate for treating adult polyglucosan body disease. My co-corresponding author is Orhan Akman from the Department of Neurology at the Columbia University Medical Center. And this work is co-authored by Igor Ferreira, Leonardo Solmeski, Natalie Khazanov, Alexander Lossos, Rafael Alvarez, Denise Yetil, Sergei Pampu, Miguel Weil, Hanor Sanderovitz, Pablo Escriba, and Wyatt Yu. Hey. We know that partial, even modest inhibition of glycogen synthesis is curative for glycogen storage disorders or GSDs because these disorders are mostly caused by overaccumulation of glycogen. Therefore, our aim was to inhibit glycogen synthesis pharmacologically in a safe way in order to ameliorate GSDs. We developed a high throughput screening assay in which we discovered a guaiacol as a heat, guaiacol as a flavoring agent, which was able to inhibit the activity of glycogen synthesizing enzyme glycogen synthesis. And therefore, we tested guaiacol for its ameliorating effect in cell and animal uh, models of the prototypical GSD, adult polyglucosan body disease. Discoveries. The basic readout for our high throughput screen uh, was diastase resistant periodic acid chief reagent positive or pass positive accumulations that we found in a uh, MEFs, mouse embryonic fibroblast, that, uh, derived from a uh, branch against them knocked down mice. These accumulations shown here were, uh, could be quantified microscopically and thus report the effect of the heats. So we showed that uh, glycol decreases uh, polyglucosan in these maps and also glycogen synthesis. However, uh, when we tried glycol in a um, APPD patients fibroblasts, as opposed to the mouse fibroblast, we found that the only uh, heat which showed those response in uh, inhibiting polyglucosans was glycol. You can see it here as compared to other heats which did not show those response in inhibiting um, polyglucosan accumulation. So we looked for the mode of action of, uh, of glycol and we proved that it was a glycogen synthesis inhibitor both the liver isoform and the brain and muscle isoform, and it inhibited the glycogen synthase in its activated form, glucose 6-phosphate activated form and not activated form in a recombinant enzyme and in lysant. When we looked at the kinetics of the glycol effect, we saw that interestingly enough in lysate, uh, glycol acted as a mixed inhibitor. As you can see here, uh, it both decreased Vmax and increased Km. Uh, however, when we used glycol on a purified glycogen synthase, we sh showed that it acts only as a competitive inhibitor. You can see that it did not affect Vmax, but it did increase Km. So these data, or these observations, are, uh, can be reconciled with the, uh, another observation of a fossil inhibition of glycogen synthase by glycol, as you can see here, and the in silico uh, docking of glycol to the active site of glycogen synthase. So in lysate, where uh, we have kinases, Glycol can both non-competitively inhibit glycogen synthase and bind to the active site and inhibit it competitively, and in purified an enzyme, it can only inhibit it competitively. The non-competitive uh, inhibition of glycogen synthase is probably mediated by phosphoactivation of AMP kinase, which is a glycogen synthase inhibitor, and the activation of AMP kinase is probably related to the energy deficit or increase in AMP to ATP ratio uh, mediated by glycol, and this increase, this uh, catabolic shift activates the uh, glycogen synthesis inhibitor um, AMP kinase. At a systemic level, glycogen uh, glycol 
also uh, behaves uh, like a glycogen synthesis inhibitor by reducing glucose tolerance, as you can see here, um, after administration of uh, glucose post-fasting, um, both wild type and um, wild type and APVD modeling mice became hyperglycemic, so their uh, glucose tolerance was reduced as, expect as expected from a glycogen synthesis inhibitor. We then looked at the pharmacokinetics and we showed that uh, glycol is absorbed uh, quickly, relatively quickly in kidney, kidney in blue and muscle in red, and more slowly in the liver in purple and the spleen in green, uh, possibly due to enhanced metabolization of glycol by these organs. And uh, the pharmacokinetics was also related to the effect on polyglucosans. So you can see that in the liver, uh, there was a most pronounced uh, reduction of polyglucosans, which uh, can be correlated to the relatively long dwell time in the liver. Uh, in the heart, there was less pronounced reduction of polyglucosan, and in the heart, uh, glycol, was, glycol levels were low but persistent. In the brain, interestingly enough, here in black, there was no effect on. Um, uh, polyglucosan accumulation. However, there was an effect in the peripheral nerve uh, in which glycol reduced the size of the polyglucosans. Looking at the efficacy at animal level, we showed that uh, glycol increased the grip strength, which could be associated with the uh, effect, with the polyglucosan reduction effect in peripheral nerve. Um, Guaycol also corrected in aged male mice a uh, penile prolapse, um, which um, may be associated again with the uh, polyglucosan reduction in peripheral nerve. And uh, most importantly, uh, Guaycol uh, restored the survival of APBD modeling mice to white type levels. And this is probably associated with polyglucosan reduction in all uh, tissues. Uh, which were affected, peripheral nerve, liver, and heart. So we model, our model is the following. Uh, cells, normal cells have normal glycogen, which is a spherical soluble molecule, thanks to its branching. However, uh, when the relative activity of glycogen synthesis is increased, uh, which happens uh, when um, there is a deficiency in, in the branching enzyme activity, there is more elongated or less branched uh, glycogen called polyglucosan as compared to the branched normal glycogen. So this accumulation of uh, polyglucosan leads to its precipitation and to APVD symptoms. So we hypothesized that acting as a glycogen synthesis inhibitor, glycol actually um, increases relative branching or reduces elongation of, of uh, glycogen and thus tips the balance towards glycogen from polyglucosan. It reduces polyglucosan formation and thus uh, ameliorates APVD effect. In summary, uh, glycol is a safe, moderate glycogen synthesis inhibitor, which is able to reduce polyglucosan accumulation in the liver, peripheral nerve, and to some extent the heart. Therefore, glycol is a promising drug candidate for glycogen storage disorders in general, because it is able to reduce glycogen synthase activity in glycogen. And in particular, it is a promising for treating uh, glycogen storage diseases, which involve polyglucosans. Uh, because it can reduce polyglucosan accumulation. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.